She's so, she's so emotionally spent, she can't even eat. Has anybody been there? You don't have to raise your hand. Has anybody ever been there? Where you are so drained from the hurt around you, you can't even eat. It makes you sick to think about eating. When, when, when my dad died 10 years ago, it was really sudden. And I remember after about, I don't even know, two or three days after being there with my mom, because we all rushed to her side. He died of a heart attack. It was sudden. You know, we had to drive the seven hours to get there. I remember after a couple of days realizing I hadn't eaten anything. I, I wasn't even thinking. Anybody know what I mean? You're just, the, the grief takes you over, and you, you don't even, it's, just, it's not even a response anymore. Your stomach doesn't growl. You don't think about food. You're just overtaken with grief. And this is where we find Hannah. But it says she, she was eating dinner. So that tells me there's a little hope in the house with Hannah. She's eating again. That's good. And then she stands up. What I want you to see is the next time we see her in verse 10, don't put it up yet, she's bowing down with her face to the ground. So she stands up because she's getting ready to bow down. Do you see that? She stands up to walk to the place where she's going to meet with God and ask him one more time if he will provide a child for her. She believes enough to ask one more time if he will show up in her pain. Put verse 10 up. In her deep anguish, in her deep anguish, Hannah prays to the Lord weeping bitterly. Look at that picture those words paint. Verse 11, she makes a vow, and here's where everything changes. She makes a vow. She says, Lord Almighty, if you only look at me, your servant's misery, please remember me. Don't forget me. Give me a son. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him back to you all the days of his life. And she puts a caveat at the end. And no razor will ever be used on his head. Tuck that away. We're going to go back to that in a moment. But here's Hannah, same place every single year, same worship, same priest, same speaker. And she believes one more time. Maybe she can hear from God. Maybe he will answer the cries of her heart and not give the very blessing she's asking for to someone else. Does it matter when we come in here every single week and wonder if we expect to hear from God or not? Does that have anything to do with us hearing from God? I think it does. I think if we come in expecting to meet with God and expecting to hear him, we might just hear him say, wait, just wait. Or we might hear him say, stand up. Stand up and turn your heart to me because I'm about to blow your mind. We